Hello there, how are you going? I've just been reading a fascinating autobiography called Trisha As I Am, and like many autobiographies, it is about her life. And boy, what a life has she had. For those of you who don't know Trisha Goddard, Trisha Goddard started out in her TV career in Australia on the ABC on the 7.30 Report and the children's programme Play School. And then in the late 1990s hosted a chat show on ITV in the UK called Trisha and now works at Channel 5 hosting the Trisha Goddard Show. And it's an absolutely fascinating book. This is a woman who has been to hell and back and come through the other end and used her experiences not only to improve her own life but to improve the lives of others. She hasn't just sat back and been a victim, as some people may well have been, through no real fault of their own, but she's fought back and, as I say, really come through fighting and achieved so much, not only for herself and for her family, but for so many other people out there. The book starts in England where she was born. She had a white father and a black mother from the West Indies. And it talks about her early life in London, experiencing some racism, and then moving with her sisters and her parents to Tanzania in East Africa, where they were both nurses for a few years, before moving back to the UK. And I found the contrast absolutely fascinating. They were sort of they were in the UK in an inner city, very built up. She has very few memories because she moved to Tanzania when she was young. And you've got the wide open spaces and the vivid colours of Tanzania and then moving straight back to the UK and where she suddenly realized she was an outsider uh, being black herself being a mixed race realizing she was about the only black girl in her school of white people and you really feel the racism and I'm white myself but I really felt the racism she was going through it was so descriptive later in the book we read about how her father became more and more physically abusive and that very much shaped her life and her views of men and her views of what she was doing and also her worth and shook her confidence naturally and how while she had originally been close with her father their relationship became more and more distant and as I say that very much shaped her relationship with herself and with others and it's very much referred to throughout the book how her father was abusive and how a lot of her problems she puts back to her childhood and those early years and those teenage years where she had suffered a lot of abuse at the hands of her father and that abuse continued in a number of relationships she had with men who were extremely abusive and I have to admit when I was reading a lot of the book in the early stages I thought Trisha why are you taking all this it's as if you're getting from one relationship whether it be with your father or with somebody else constantly abusive and she just she does address this and she often says when you've got baggage it is none of your own fault necessarily but it, you can attract the wrong kind of people and it just keeps on increasing and increasing. And there were times in the book when I thought, Trisha, you just seem to be a victim. What are you going to do about this? But as the book continues, there's a turning point and you see that inner strength. And I know I'm sounding very psychological here, but there's that inner strength and Trisha comes back fighting. And she really does come through the other end. You know, not only did she have these abusive relationships, but her life took a brand new turn when she was an air stewardess for Gulf Air and met Robert Nesdale, who was a young member of the, well, the Young Liberals in Australia, the Young Liberals. And she moved to Australia with him. And she found as soon as he married her, he ignored her a great deal. But he also took a great lot of control over her life, became very controlling, but more and more distant and more and more distant and she realized that he wasn't really in love with her she was a trophy wife now Robert Nesdale himself I've read about him a very very well respected young politician who at the time was rumored to have died of cancer eventually but actually died of AIDS now he died of AIDS after they divorced but of course as usual in the obituaries and and the funeral service everybody says great things about him Trisha gives that other side, you know, the husband that ignored her, the husband that controlled her. And eventually the marriage came to an end when they had an argument and Trisha accidentally stabbed herself, causing her to lose the use partly of one of her hands and wrists. And that was absolutely fascinating. And it's always interesting to hear the other side of the marriage and her side. Then she gets into a second marriage to a guy called Mark from a production company she set up in Sydney and although it started off well eventually he too started ignoring her they had a daughter together called Billy 
and I believe another one called Maddie as well. And throughout the book, you see these pattern of these men, whether it be her father or partners that she's got involved with, who have in some way abused her, whether it's been controlling her, whether it's been abusing her physically, or been ignoring her, or playing mind games. But eventually, she had a breakdown. And that is when her life changed. She started to fight back. She started to realise who her friends really were. And the great thing is she met a wonderful guy called Peter, who she's still with, now living in England. And she has used those wonderful experiences, those awful experiences rather, to not only change her own life and that of her family, but to help the lives of others. And when I first saw Patricia's show in the UK, I used to think, what a load of trash. But then I watched it and I thought, this is a woman who's been to hell and back and fought back and won. And now she's helping others. Unlike a lot of talk show hosts, she doesn't judge. She doesn't moralise, but she hears what they've got to say. And having read the book, I understood where she was coming from. She's been through so much, but she hasn't just given up and been a victim. She really, really has fought back. And... One of the great things about the book is I sometimes read some autobiographies and I'm able to remain detached. With this one, I wasn't. I really got involved. There was a time when she talks about obsessive compulsive disorder. I suffer from that. And I had to do a double take. I went, that's me. I used to go to the bathroom to check that the tap was off. I used to bang on the door a certain number of times. There were so many episodes in the book that I could identify with. I was saying... That is me. And there are other times in the book when I was literally almost in tears. I was in tears when her sister committed suicide. And I got very into it. She has a way of writing which really stirs the emotion. I couldn't remain detached. I had tears in my eyes. For a couple of minutes I had to put the book down as if it was my own sister. A couple of recommendations. I would have loved to have known a bit more. I know this is a book about Trisha's own life. But your parents play an important part of your life. And although the father gets a lot of mentions, as does the mother, I would have loved to know a bit more about how their parents met, where they met. I know why they got married, but where they met. I would also have loved to have known a little bit about, well, Trisha talks about how in Australia and the UK she experienced racism. What was it like in Tanzania? She doesn't really refer to the treatment she got for being black, or rather a black Briton or black West Indian in Africa, in East Africa. I would have loved to know a bit about that. What was it like for her own mother, who was from the West Indies, being in Tanzania? That would have been quite interesting. So all in all, a really, really good read, and I suggest you all go out and read it. If you want to just learn a little bit about issues such as schizophrenia or depression alone, or find out a bit more about this fascinating woman, the book, once again, is Trisha As I Am by Trisha Goddard. Definitely well worth a read. Go out and get it now. Brilliant book. I really enjoyed it. And as I said, it stirred a lot of emotions in me. And I definitely recommend it. Thank you. Bye-bye.